Nah, dude, if you had told me at the beginning of the season this is what we would have seen out of this player and the Chicago Blackhawks, I would have called you nuts! Would have told you to get things checked out! Maybe not everything is all up in there, but oh my goodness, we have ourselves today the biggest surprise of a contract handed out. And you know from the title, you know from the thumbnail, today we are talking about Jason Dickinson of the Chicago Blackhawks. Because today, the Hawks announced they have signed Dickinson to a huge contract extension. It's two years long, and the AAV is $4.25 million a year. Oh my goodness. Now, the thing is, Jason Dickinson, if you're a Canucks fan, you probably look at this and you say, wait a minute, what? That guy got $4.25 million a year on an extension? Two years long, this guy's making 8.5 mil? And you know what? Here's the thing. Jason Dickinson, when he was a Vancouver Canuck, for the one season he had, 2021-2022, coming over from Dallas where he was a third-line center, a penalty-killing, face-off winning guy, Jason Dickinson in his one Vancouver Canuck season two years ago had 11 points in 62 games played. I'll admit, he was not good. And everything that Stars fans promised said, oh yeah, this guy is a fantastic penalty killer, he can win you a lot of draws, he's a fantastic third line presence, just defensively minded, he can do everything right, he's the little things guy. Because there was such a good sentiment from Dallas Stars fans when the Vancouver Canucks acquired Jason Dickinson, we were all super disappointed when this guy came over to the Canucks and just did not fit with the system. He had 11 points, as we had said, not a great point production metric, he just did not mesh with what it is the Canucks wanted to do, and alongside of some of these other kind of expensive two-way caliber guys that just weren't providing the production to justify their cap hits, Dickinson kind of found himself in that club, you know, like the Ericsons, the Tanner Pearsons towards the end. Dickinson with Vancouver was making like $2.6 million a year. And a lot of Canucks fans were like, wait, this guy stinks. He's not worth that money. 2.6 mil is supposed to not really be that bad, but the Canucks were trapped with this player who was playing in their third line and he just could not justify it in any way, could not justify that dollar amount. So the Canucks only had one season out of Jason Dickinson. They sent him away to the Chicago Blackhawks and the trade was a pretty big one when we all saw it go down because the Canucks paid a second round pick to get Dickinson off of their roster. They sent a prime piece of draft capital to get this trade done and a lot of Canucks fans were freaking out when it was done. Hey, damn, what a mistake. They got this guy in Dickinson who wasn't good, so they had to pay a second round pick to get rid of him. That is so bad. And the Canucks in return got Riley Stillman, who, if you remember all the videos we made talking about him, you remember that he was so bad. Like, my goodness, Riley Stillman was by far, up and away, the worst Vancouver Canucks defenseman I personally have watched play a healthy role on this team. Like, you had the Spizas, the Goodbransons, the Delzados, the other defensemen. Bieksa, towards the end of his Canucks career, was really bad. But Riley Stillman was the worst one of them all. He was not an NHL caliber defenseman. The Canucks were forcing him on their lineup because they didn't have anybody else to play defense. And Jason Dickinson yeeted off to Chicago in a deal that a lot of Canucks fans said, okay, it sucks that we gave it the pick, but he made $2.6 million, and that was a lot of money. So, where did Dickinson go from there? Well, in his first season in Chicago, 30 points, 78 games played, nice. He was a minus 29, but that's okay. He was on a rebuilding team, they were bad enough to get Bedard. Dickinson was a lot better in Chicago in his first year than what he showed off in Vancouver. And now this season, Dickinson has 21 points in 43 games played, on pace for about 40 points. And he's a plus 7. He's got 14 goals in 43 games played this year. That is a career high by quite a significant margin, and we're halfway through the year. He's on pace for 27 goals. Jason Dickinson, if you look at the stat sheet, this guy's putting the puck in the net like pretty consistently, and now he's like the number one center on the team. Connor Bedard's out. Jason Dickinson 
is the guy now. He's a top tier guy. And like, I'm not saying that he would have been this in Vancouver. I'm not saying the Canucks were fools to give up on him. That is clearly not the case. Like circumstantially, back when he was in Vancouver, when he got traded away, a lot of Canucks fans just swallowed the bullet. Yeah, it sucks to give up a second round pick to pay to get rid of somebody. But nah, bro, Jason Dickinson was not good in Vancouver. So for him to revive his career in this way and take advantage of a Chicago squad that needs to reach the cap floor, this is a brilliant deal for the man himself that is Jason Dickinson. And for Chicago, it kind of goes to show you, you know, like the dichotomy of different teams in the NHL. The other day we had Nick Foligno also sign his extension and that guy... I mean, he's going to be making a lot of money too. Felino on the books for $4.5 million a year. Two-year extension goes on till 2025-2026. Jason Dickinson also goes on till 2025-2026. The Blackhawks, if you go over to their roster, look at all the guys that are expiring in 2024-2025. They're going to need to re-sign players. They're going to need to get money all the way to the cap floor. It's not a guarantee that this team even is eligible cap-wise because they have so few dollars signed to guys beyond 2025. Even with the behemoth contracts like Seth Jones, $9.5 million a year, Taylor Hall, $6 million a year, this team needed to spend dollars. So that's why they went out there and did this. Nick Felino got his signing. A lot of people like Nick Felino. People think he's a great guy, which I definitely don't doubt based off of the interviews that he has. He's not a top tier number one guy in the NHL. But he got paid. And Jason Dickinson, in no way should this guy be a number one center, but he is, circumstantially speaking, and now he got paid. Realistically, like, Chicago fans are not pissed off about this signing. Like, if anything, this is what they need. Guys who are willing to commit to Chicago while they go through these tough times, rebuilding and getting draft capital, getting younger players, and allowing them to grow in the NHL. Jason Dickinson is not a long-term option not in the slightest, but he is 28 years old, so signing him till he's 30 while being a number one center for $4.25 million a year, I mean, look, the guy earned it. Maybe not on any other team he would have earned this, but he got it on Chicago, so good for him. And he's been a good veteran presence. A lot of Hawks fans have been very appreciative of the service that Dickinson has provided for this team. And so, if he is like the guy to go to the All-Star game because Connor Bedard's not going, if he is the guy to suit up in a number one center role for the next few months here, then hey, all the power to Chicago. Do what it is you need to do. It's just because of Vancouver, the way that Dickinson was utilized in this city just two years ago, I would not have expected this at all. This is a crazy signing. There is no other team in the NHL that would have given Felino or Dickinson the money that they got. But in Chicago, it's fine. It's not even going to hurt the Blackhawks. Like, this helps them. This is such a strange, strange situation in the NHL where you have so many teams around the league that are just, you know, trapped. They're so tight up to the dollar to make things work under the cap. But then you have Chicago where it's like, yeah, no, we need to reach the cap floor. We need to get enough money being spent to be eligible to play. So here you go. Money, money. Felino Dickinson, yet $8 million each. That is crazy, dude. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this signing right here. Jason Dickinson gets $4.25 million a year for the next two years after playing in Vancouver, not being great, and being a third-line center option from Dallas. He is now the number one center on this team, and it wasn't even really his choice. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishash Rolls 9 and bye.